I've gone ahead and gathered all of your guys' real questions, things that I hear all the time. I'm gonna call it our 2024 trending FAQ list if you're thinking about entering the housing market here in Minnesota. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right into the questions right after you guys give me a like and smash the subscribe button because you know that always continues to motivate me to make videos just like this. Question number one, how far out should I talk to a realtor when I'm looking to buy a house? Three months prior to when you want to move in, that's like the latest. Like don't contact me any later in the process than that because we'll definitely need that time to get our ducks in a row. And I just want to further reiterate, you guys can always reach out. I know that it maybe feels a little bit weird when you know you're at the very early stages of the process. I'm giving you guys the full green light to call, text, or DM me, even if you're 36 months out from buying, because I want to help you set the table for your goals when that day does come around. Super popular one. Will mortgage rates drop in 2024? So I'm going to give you two pieces to this. One, the stuff that we already know. The Fed has already come out and said publicly that they're going to try to drop rates or cut rates down three different times this year. So the short answer is we we know that they will come down. My personal take on this answer is that 2024 is an election year and things always seem to get like really good in the economy right before the election comes off because before they gather votes, they want the recency to look like things are trending in the right direction, right? So I personally feel like rates are going to come down for that reason as well, not to get political, but I just think, you know, something to look at. Next question. I have the money saved up and I'm ready to buy. Should I buy a house in 2024 or wait? I think this one's going to depend on your personal situation. Like at what point in the year is your lease break? Do you have any other major like life things coming up this year that you want to take a look at? But if you feel like you're ready to buy a house and you want to move on to the point of like crunching numbers and talking about the actual playbook, then feel free to reach out and we can see if it makes sense for you. What are the top suburbs in Minneapolis area for a first time home buyer? So I'm going to emphasize the first time home buyer heavily here. I'm assuming you're a younger professional. You want to be semi close to the city and the hustle. So I'm going to focus here on the first ring suburbs. St. Louis Park and Golden Valley are probably known as like the top suburbs because although Edina is maybe the cream of the crop, I think St. Louis Park and Golden Valley are both more affordable than Edina. Just as close to the city, a ton of fun things to do. And um, I don't think you get too much house or too much space, but they're in constant demand because they're so close to the city, which means your home price is likely going to stay stable or even go up, which is great because you're a first time home buyer and you need it to go up so you can springboard yourself into the next house. Also honorable mention would be Robbinsdale. It's a first ring suburb as well. And they've made a ton of investments in bringing in a lot of cool businesses and it definitely checks the box of affordability. What's your favorite rural suburb in Minnesota thinking 30 to 45 minutes outside of the cities? First one that comes to mind is Hanover. Hanover still hasn't been developed too much yet. It's got like a super small town feel like local barbecue spots and little bars and walking paths and stuff like that. So I would say Hanover is a hidden gem. Um, feels like you're in the country and feels like you're kind of living the, the rural life, but you're 15 minutes away from Maple Grove and all the shopping and things there. I'd also give the nod to Dayton and Lakeville. Both of those are exploding in the new construction scene, and they're also within 30, 40 minutes of the Twin Cities. Is buying a house with an unfinished basement a good or a bad idea? Generally speaking, if you're looking to make money on your first investment, which most houses with unfinished basements are a starter home, so it's probably your first home. Being that you want to make money on that first home, I would say you run towards finished basements. I'm currently recording this in my finished basement. I had a lot of fun finishing it, and it's actually quite a bit more affordable than you think. Adding square footage to your home is always going to be the best play for your property value, especially when talking about a starter home where you're usually there for like three to five years. If you were looking to buy in 2024, would you wait for a specific month or season? This totally depends on what you like when you're shopping, right? So think about it this way. You will have more options between March and July. You're going to have a ton more options. You'll be able to see, you know, 20 homes that are within your criteria, you know, knock on wood, unless your criteria is crazy, you'll have a ton of options to go check out. So what you'll likely run into is a little bit more of a competitive environment where people are bidding on these homes. You might have to waive your inspection or take the price to a little bit less comfortable of a point. And so if you don't mind that and you'd prefer having the options, then fine. That it's a, it's a great time to buy. But I will say if you're looking solely for 
the protection of your investment and making sure that you don't pay a crazy dollar amount. Here in Minnesota, the time to buy and the time to strike would really be the holidays because although there's less homes on the market, no one's just testing the waters in like November, right? They're usually moving because they have to move. So more opportunity for you to get a good price on the home, I would say, during those months. What should I look for when picking an agent? Um, I would say like dark hair, like a taupe gray zip up would be smart. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, I think what you should look for in an agent is someone who's active enough in the current market is the main criteria. I don't care if they've been in business 25 years. That doesn't mean that they know what's working today. So you need to work with someone who's got a track record in the last six months, right? Someone who's actively selling things all the time. That way, you know what the winning strategies are out there in the current market so you can implement them in your situation. Uh, also someone who's never pushy, like you should never feel like the agent wants you to have a house more than you want to have a house. That's like the mic drop, like biggest thing, no doubt. How do you identify a city where the home prices are going up? I love this one as an investor minded agent. So the main thing is just, is the population growing, right? Like, is it a good enough place for people to be flocking to it is the first thing because the market speaks. Second thing I look for, and this sounds dumb, but this is going to be to look for businesses entering that city because they're looking at more data and more analytics than you and I are, which is fine. Let them do their job. I look for uh, Chick-fil-A, Lifetime, and hy V, also Costco. If it has these things, better yet, if it has all of these things, you definitely know that a lot of eyes have identified this city as a place in the path of growth. And I think that's really all you need to say that this is a safe bet on a city. Where the hell are prices going in 2024? So this is the most interesting way I can put this. In 2023, we saw interest rates go to 8%, astronomically high. It was so difficult to afford a house. In that year, home prices went up 1.3%. If home prices go up when interest rates are that high, I'm not going to tell you that we're about to go on a huge, crazy run and prices are going to fly through the roof because I don't know those things. What I do know is if home prices stayed solid during 8% interest rates, they're going to at least remain solid through 2024. So possibly some appreciation. I would bank on a couple percent. But if you're looking for prices to like plummet, it would have been last year. It, it, if it didn't happen then, it's not going to happen now. So that's going to do it for our 10 frequently asked questions. But I know when you're buying a house, you probably have 10,000 questions. So if you have something more specific to your situation or you want to get my take on a real estate question, drop it in the comments, hit me in the DMs, give me a call, text. All my info is linked on the YouTube channel and I'd be happy to lend my expertise on any of your questions. So until the next video, guys, this is your Minnesota Moving Guide, Austin Amarita signing off and I'll see you on the next one.